Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's the last day of the month, April the 30th, 2019. And I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas so she can give us her watch list. Okay, so everyone, we're going to talk about NOVN, XXII, AMG, Apple, and Twitter. So let's get started. We're going to talk about Noven. So Noven had news today, and this stock was loaded pre-market at $1.16 by JD. And um, we there was some news today that they did have uh, a $35 million non-dilutive funding. And I kind of like the headline of that. I'm just trying to load the article here. It's taken a little time to open up here. But um, this one here did run up beautifully. And, um, you know, maybe in the meantime, Jim, you could talk about the chart because I can't seem to be open up the article here. I did love the headline on that when they said secures up to 35 million in non-diluting funds. Oh, yeah, here funding. it is. So it has. It does say here that, um, you know, they got the, the up to 35 million. So that doesn't, you know, they can have up to 35 million. They're going to say 25 million is available right away. And they're saying the 10 million will be given upon achieving positive phase three results for their clinical trial of molluscum contagiosum and so will actually allow this particular company novin to actually initiate the phase three program and they're actually going to start beginning uh recruiting patients actually this coming month may 2019 so that's actually good uh the 35 million uh, dollar uh, financing agreement is with Ready Creek and they're actually the largest shareholder of this actual company and they actually own 15% of the outstanding shares. So in return for this uh, upcoming payment, uh, Ready Creek will get 10 and 20% of the North American economics including upfront payments, milestones and royalties that will be received by Novin if they uh, any connection with their drug that they have, the SB206 and 204. So that's great. So this will let them um, proceed with phase three and the recruiting starts next month. Uh, so Jim, let's talk about that chart. Yeah, first I want to point out, it was the trade of the day and one of our best traders in the room that I highly looked up to uh, called this out at 116, JD28, congratulations. I took it too, I played it, played it on the way up played it on the way down when it got down I played it back up and I scalped it three or four times today so this is kudos goes out to JD28 now let's talk about the trade itself or the stock the stock had a nice little pullback it had a breakout pre after hours and then it pulled back during pre-market and once it hit the floor today it was right around 88 cents and it started bouncing up and it was triggered at his call at 116 and then we hit a high which created a solid resistance level at 145, which later became a support level. Did pull back again to that 116. I asked him, I said, when did you get in this trade? You know, I didn't know he got in it for the first run, and I thought he got in it on the second run. But it pulled right back to that 116 again and then ran all the way up to a high of 173. And I was calling this trade out in the room most of the day because I got to scalping it here at the last couple hours of the day. And so this is NOVN. I think support level on this trade right now is going to be right around this 150, 145 area. We are up after hours to the new high, back here to the double top, which is could break out and go higher tomorrow. But I'm looking for a support level at the low 145. I want to see that hold. You can see that it was a previous high, then it became support. Resistance that we need to break out of is at 168, and that could bring us up. Let me pull up the yearly chart on this stock and see if we can find us another resistance. I do have a 174 and I do have a 187 and if it wants to run we could take it back up to almost to two dollars and that'll be a, a mental stop for me at least to get out of this trade and if you know we then we have a huge gap we got to fill after that. So pullback support is going to be 145 resistance we got to get to is going to be 174, 187, and 198. And the next one we're going to talk about, that's N-O-V-N. Next one we're going to talk about is going to be a cigarette tobacco company that Vegas is going to mention here, and it's called XXII. 
Yeah, so this one is a congr- uh, great shout out to Jake from Transpider. So, you know, he did alert this trade today um, as a day trade slash swing trade. And, you know, XXII is in the plant biotech company. You know, what they look for is um, technology that allows it to increase or decrease the levels of nicotine in the tobacco plants and the level of the cannabinoids in the hemp cannabis plants with genetic engineering and plant breeding. So um, what they're doing is there is a, uh, a line of cigarettes called the VLN cigarettes. And uh, that one contains about 95% less nicotine than any of the 100 leading cigarette brands in the U.S., which was a comment made by Henry Signano III, who's the president and CEO of XXII. So recently the FDA was there to inspect the manufacturing facility. That is a really important milestone in the FDA's review process, and they expect that they will result in getting the company's first FDA-approved MRTP combustible tobacco cigarette. So we're waiting for news on that. And Jim, over to you on that chart. Well, here we go again with another good call in the room. Jake alerted to me from trendspider.com, the, the, uh, right around the 204 area. And I didn't take advantage of the trade right off the bat. I did jump into it and scalp it for a small play. Called it to go to 121. This is the year chart. You can see it's kind of choppy. We did have a double bottom here at 169. Then we had that nice little breakout today off that FDA news. Inspecting the plants. And, and I think this is really can probably bounce up a lot more. Here's your year chart. We had a year high of 329. We could bring this up to three years, and you can see how high it's been in the past. And this is one that we were playing right up here around four, three to four bucks here a couple years ago. So she has pulled back. It has got a lot lower down here to 74 back in 2016. So I'm going to pull up the 20 day right now. We're going to look at the 20 day chart real fast. We have a low, low support down here right around I'd say this double top area right at uh, two bucks a dollar ninety nine I was alerted to it today at 204 and that's right where the 20 SMA is right here on the 20 day one hour chart and I do have a trend line that I was cupping up here and then I'm gonna pull up to six months and this is what he was looking at when he showed me his chart that we needed to break that resistance level of these three different tops on the way down and I had one going up. So when we met at the middle, it finally did break out and run up to about 122 up into that 100 SMA on a six month chart. So now we're going to pull up th the three minute. I'm going to call support on this baby. No lower than that 210. I hate to see that. I like to see it hold right here at the 213 level. And what we want to do is break past this 223. I had a 227 target. He has a 235 target. This is going to be XXII. Low support right about, I'd say, first one at 218. Second one down here around the 213, 215 area. And then the first support between the 206 and the 210. And that's XXII. And the next one we've talked about quite a bit in this room. And that's going to be AMD. And today was a good day for AMD. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, you know, AMD, we've talked about and uh, you guys know, um, you know, everyone thought that the news on AMD was going to be actually bearish. But you know what? Congratulations to AMD. I mean, I've been bullish on this stock and, you know, they did report stronger than expected first quarter results. This stock has soared over six percent after hours. They did have adjusted earnings of six uh, cents per share. The expectation was about five. And they did report revenue of 1.27 billion above the consensus of 1.26. Um, they did deliver a very solid uh, quarter and significant gross margin expansion with the Ryzen and EPYC processor. Um, so you know what? The CEO, Lisa Su, is doing a very good job. Now, what's going to be interesting for me, um, they, also, they did mention also that the revenue for a second quarter will be between 1.48 and 1.57 billion. Um, the estimates from the analyst was about 1.52. So the fact that they're saying as high as 1.57 is exceeding the analyst expectations on what the estimates will be for Q2 um, is the fact that this is going to be a major short squeeze. So you guys know I love a barbecue and I got to tell you, AMD shorts are in trouble. So 
there is going to be a short squeeze coming and my long-term target on this is going to be 40 bucks. So I'm going to let Jim talk about the chart. Now yeah. we're trading this on the option side. Uh, we have option calls on this from the 2850 strike and uh, those expire on Friday. So we're in good shape to hold on to them tomorrow. But I'm going to be looking at some roll-ups, which means that I'm going to be looking at option strikes with a higher target with later expiry dates uh, further out because AMD is going to go higher longer term. But at the same time, we are going to see a shorts panicking. So um, I actually think that this story of AMD is a success and they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. They are the only competitor with NVIDIA and I think super, super cheap stock for a stock that's in the semiconductor space. So um, this looks great. And uh, let's hear about this chart, Jim. This is my number one chip maker stock. Definitely, it, it bounced all the way from three years ago from 345 all the way up to 3430. I mean, 3414. Now, we really got interested in this stock when it was right down here, right under $10 and called it out. And then she went ahead and we've had that double, triple bottom, quadruple bottom down here at 10. And that's when we got real excited about it. And it ran all the way up to a high, just a beautiful green path all the way straight up to the moon to 34.14. Then pulled back to around 16.50, 16.60 area. We also were playing the stock back then, called it about. This here is a weekly chart, three-year weekly chart. What we're going to do now is going to pull up the 20-day. Now watch this. I look at this pattern every day. I did call Miss Vegas the other day last week that our support level on this trade was going to be right around 27.14 to 27.25 for an entry. We have touched that a few times and then we touched it again today and the thing was actually went way below that price to about 26.95 which you can see is a triple bottom. Bam, bam, and bam. That was definitely a strong buy to get in this trade. And she ran up after hours all the way up to 29.95, which Miss Vegas called out last, oh, a little while back. And we talked about that trade back then. When it hit that high, she called 30 bucks, and we hit 29.95. So I've got a $30 target on this. Looks like we hit it again. Anything past that's a beautiful gift. And you did see the, the, the highs on that, on that three-year chart. Right here at 34.14, that's what we got to break. We got to break that $33 area. But it, um, and it, this stock can pull back just a little bit. But this is one of our bullish trades in the chip maker index. So we're going to pull this down here, sector. We're going to pull this right down to a five day, 15 minute. Support is going to be your new support on this trade, it's going to be right around 28.71 to 2880 for your first support. Second one's going to be right around this 2850. So you got 2850, 2871 and 2880. We could see all three of them numbers. I hate to see it go any lower than that. If it does, we're going to go back out in here to right around 2822. Sometimes they do it after their good earnings, but we've got a nice little uh, pennant flag forming or ascending triangle pattern forming after hours. I'm going to magnify this up real fast. You see what I'm talking about? You draw this trend line from right here, from this bottom of this wick up to about here, and then you got that flat line right here at the 2808 level, 2809. And once we break past that, we're going to go up into the new resistance levels. That's going to be 2939, and we got to break that 2995. That's a double top. And then we're going to go on all, all the way up past 30 to 34. So this is AMD. Put it on your watch list. It had a beautiful earnings. It, it's, I mean, they were bashing the chip makers on CNBC, but they were up putting this one here up on a pedestal along with another one. And I can't quite remember what it was, but this was the one that I do remember. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be everybody likes to eat one, but you can't eat these. And these are apples. We're talking about That's Apple. right. So Apple had great earnings tonight. Um, you know, they did provide the following guidance for the 2019. I mean, they did say revenue was between 52.5 billion and 54.5. They said gross margin was 37, 38 percent and that the tax rate of approximately 16.5. But what's been really surprising here is that um, they did mention that the iPad is what uh, actually um, helped with the revenue. 
So, you know what, that's great. Um, they didn't really talk about any new stuff that Apple has waiting in the wings. Um, you know, the only new service that Apple has launched to the public was last month. They talked about, you know, their $9.99 per month News Plus. And, you know, everyone who signed up got a free month. And none of that money has actually been made into this particular quarter's release. And it might not be long before their subscription money starts to overshadow its non-iPhone hardware entirely. Um, they didn't really talk about the iPhone at all. Um, you know, so we'll have to see. I mean, at this time last year, I mean, Tim Cook talked about, you know, Apple having 20% growth in China. And you know what? Uh, as we know, we just don't know the situation of how it's going in, in China. Uh, you know, it's not going that well, I think, uh, for Apple in, in that market at this time. So, um, you know, the days of counting on China as a major growth engine, I think, is over. If the company is seriously lucky, the gains it makes off services like Apple TV and News uh, will actually be enough to help it break through the what they call the trillion dollar barrier again. And that was comments made by one of the writers who wrote an article uh, named Chris Velasco. He's a mobile editor and uh, he's uh, very focused on uh, tech crunch. So uh, over to you, Jim, on Apple. Yep. Like I said, an apple a day will keep the doctor away. So we did look at this beautiful little bounce. I mean, the thing pulled back today. So if anybody, they thought this thing was going to tank because of China, it, but it, that's just not the case. It went all the way down here from 199.11, kind of held a, a, a little upward McDonald loop here to pull back to about $200. And then after hours, bam, man, this thing just took off like a rocket. We were going Apple, boom, boom. So it did hit a high of 2 of 13. Kind of pulled back a little bit. I expect it to pull back a little bit more. We're going to see what we can do here on the chart. On the daily one minute. Now i got to get to the daily one minute. There we go. i pull up these after hours and see if we can find a support level. So we've got a support right here, right around 210. Shoot, got to change that. Or I can't get that done. So we're going to magnify this up again. Got a level right here, right around 210 support. I got another one right down here, right around 209, and then another one right here at 208. Anything below that is going to probably frantically sell off a little bit. We want that 208.68 to hold, and we got to break a resistance up here. First one's going to be right here, right around 211.10, right there. Next one's going to be right in this area. I'm going to kind of live, give it an equilibrium to right about here at 211.78. Then we got the resistance high we got a break. It's going to be the 212.76. So this is how I see it. No lower than 208.68. Second support right here, right around the 210. With the resistance breakouts of these three levels, 211.10, 211.78, 212.76. It can run into my moving averages. I have the 20, I have the 50, I have the 100. And I have the 200. So you could always watch them on a daily one minute for support levels on a breakout stock. Feel free to stop this video at any time. Copy and paste these charts. Write down these supports and resistances. And see how accurate I am. The next one we're going to talk about is something that Vegas and I do have an account on. You can find it on our website. And that's called Twitter. Well, you know what? Uh, you know, everyone's talked about, you know, Twitter. And, uh, you know, i got to say that um you know bullish on the stock i mean it's got a beautiful uh cup and handle it's it's trading in a very tight range and uh you know in terms of a swing trade idea uh or something to hold longer term i think twitter we're going to see some really impressive uh movement coming up on twitter um i am liking the way it's traded today i mean it traded beautifully this morning i will say uh, we were able to get some options on here and make some very quick money in and out of the option calls. I mean, the stock went as high as 40, 92. I actually thought it would go to like at least 41-ish, uh, but it didn't break. But nevertheless, it's still trading in that very nice tight range. And I kind of like that stock's kind of consolidated at this point. So uh, keep this one on your watch if you like to do swing trades um, or something, you know, longer term hold. Uh, Twitter, in my opinion, has room. Uh, to go to about 43 to 45 next. I mean, if you look at the chart, um, still looks good. I mean, definitely overbought. The only thing I'm not in love with is the fact that it had a shooting star candlestick there. 
Um, so we'll just, you know, keep a watch on it, but it, it still looks, uh, st the weekly still looks good. Um, and so just, you know, keep it on watch and I'll let Jim talk about maybe some supports and resistance. Cause you know, if you're not in this trade, you want to wait for some times for a good pullback. I think it's kind of a good number where it is right now after hours, about 40.09. Um, pretty much close to near where the open was today. So, Jim, let's hear it from you on what you think of Twitter. Yeah, Twitter had a great run first of the year last year, right around uh, this time of the year last year. It ran all the way from 28.49 all the way up to 47.79 with a resistance top right around 46.70. So this has a lot more room to run up. I do have a couple resistance lines here that I've charted out. I'm going to put one more right here. So this is your yearly chart. We've got three different resistances we can hit. We did break out of that first one. Almost hit the first one there at 46.16. The second one's going to be right around 42.42. And then we've got probably another one right in, let me see here, probably right around 43.07. So I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart now and have a look at it. I think that tells me everything I need to know. I'm going to definitely put a resistance level right here at 4067. So this stock can pull back. If it does pull back, we've got a support level right down here, right around 3855 for your, for your second support. Your low support is going to be right down here, right around $38. So we got 38, 38.55 with your first support right here at 39.36. Then we've got, we're sitting here at a pivot point right now at a resistance level of 39.88 to 40.16. We've got to break that 40.16 to get it up to the next two resistance levels at 40.67, 41.15. And then I'm going to pull up that year chart and give you the third one. That third one. 48.15 then that next two or after that's going to be 42.42 and 43.07 so this is twitter please if you can follow us on twitter we do have a twitter uh link here it's called i love stocks one you can find it on our website we do have a link to that right here and you can hit that link and that'll bring you right to our website and follow us also please subscribe to our video and ring that bell for future updates. And I'm going to let Miss Vegas have the final say. Oh, well, thanks. Well, you know what, guys? Um, you know, the market's been a bit like, you know, sometimes you're not sure, like, what the market's going to give you. Uh, and you know what? I think sometimes it's just nothing wrong with sometimes sitting on the hands. Like, I mean, there were some parts of today where I just didn't trade. And you know what? Sometimes people say they're bored and it's boring. And, yes, it can feel that way. But you know what gives you an opportunity to maybe look for a good setup, look for some, you know, research, some charts. I was able to look for some swing trade ideas. I posted a couple of them on Twitter. Um, so certainly follow our feed so that you can get some ideas. Um, and, you know, so I was looking also maybe at, you know, some charts that looked like they looked pretty bullish, maybe looking at some option calls. So, you know, you can't always rely on these like scanners to feed you things to do. You have to sometimes think out of the box. So, you know, sometimes you're going to go through these little bit of a lull, you know, but take advantage to like sometimes say, you know what, it's not that busy right now. The market, you know, I don't feel comfortable. I mean, I had people say, I don't really feel comfortable trading today. I'm not really liking the direction of the market. And so I said, well, you know what, what are you going to do? Why don't you just take the day off? And you know what, they took advantage of the fact that they could take the day off and, um, you know, run some errands or, you know, go to the gym or do some things that you normally would have to do later in the evening, you know, just take, make a head, you know, take a head start with what you got to do. So, you know, we just trade what the market wants to give us. Nobody wants to trade just to trade because of boredom. Cause when you do things out of boredom, believe me, you will lose money. I mean, people do that all the time. So uh, rather just not trade and just do something else, keep yourself busy with something else. And this way you're not just entering trades just because you're bored. Because sure. people always want to feel they're doing something when they're trading. And uh, people that have done that have really lost money rather than make money. So, you know, be careful. Trade smart. Sure. Um, so on that note, I wish you guys a great night. We'll see you tomorrow. And uh, if you want, come by our room. We always have some great ideas. We have scanners. We talk live on voice. Welcome to come and visit. If not, just follow us on Twitter. 
and subscribe to our YouTube, and we're happy to talk to you here. Have a great night, everyone. Hey, Miss Vegas, can I throw in a special bonus play here? Sure. Do you remember your call you made on Grub? Yes. The you short squeeze that we made. Oh, man. I tell you what. She called this thing out and made an option play on it. And I'm going to – we had a low – and this is at a bottom. This is what I, what interests me on the trade right now. I and mean, we had a low of 63.13 and ran all the way up to $67. And if I pull up this year's chart, and I really – this is what made me want to re-mention it. We had a high on this stock at 149. She's done nothing but pull back. So Grub, I think, would be a good one to keep on watch. And she did make a good call on it. And it was an options play and just beautiful. Is there anything you want to say about it before we, we go ahead and shut this down? Well, you know what? The nice thing with Grub, I mean, we did say the shorts. We're going to get a short squeeze. And you know what? I'm really good at really trying to find opportunities for squeezing shorts. <laughs> I'm sorry, shorts. But you know what? If you're if you're if it's worthy of a short, by all means, I love it when they make money too. You know, nothing against shorts personally, but you know sometimes that's just it was just not a good time for them to be shorting the stock. It was just way too powerful, and they got squeezed. Um, so we did trade the sixty-seven dollar calls, uh, is what we bought. We paid eighty cents for those, and uh, those option calls. Uh, did go over to I think it was they did go to about a dollar ten, and you know what I have good news they went to a dollar forty on the ask uh, mm. just before the close. So I mean you know people are going to be making almost a hundred percent on that. So you know again we really try to help small accounts. So don't listen to things out there that you can't make money if you have a little bit of money. You can make money if you find good setups, and so sometimes. You know, you just got to be comfortable to trade one contract. You don't have to buy many, just one. And, you know, you take your, you know, and if it's not this one because it was too expensive, maybe $80 is too much, then you maybe wait for something cheaper. Um, so anyhow, I just wanted to share that. It was a good barbecue. And we're still holding the calls because we liked the way that the stock closed. Uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful roast. <clears throat> so, yeah, we'll continue and see that tomorrow. So thank you, Jim, for bringing that up. Yes, ma'am, because I really thought that was a good call. So this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Um, today's date, it's the last day of the month. We're in the month of uh, April the 30th, 2019. I can't get the month of May out of my mind because I'm going on vacation at the end of May. So I'm looking forward to that. So there's only one thing I'm going to leave, and that's we love stocks.